today we will be talking about the 10 most important tips for new traders, beginning traders or traders that are struggling. So welcome back and welcome to a new video or podcast or wherever you consume in this. And I've put together a list of the 10 most important tips that will help new traders make a big improvement in their trading, hopefully. So first of all, we need to start with the most obvious. You need to treat trading seriously. And what does it mean? You cannot treat trading just like a hobby if your goal is to really support yourself, support your family and to create another stream of income or maybe even replace your regular nine to five job. So you need to make sure that you give trading the seriousness it deserves and don't just come home after your work, you turn on the TV and then in the background or while you're sitting on the couch with your laptop on, on your lap, um, you are just scanning through charts and hope to find a profitable trade. This is not the seriousness that is required or needed in trading. You need to make sure that you dedicate time every day. Make sure that what helps is that you uh, find maybe the same time every day where you block out maybe an hour, maybe two hours, maybe three hours um, for your trading, for your backtesting, for all the trading related work. Work distraction free, that is very important. So while you're doing your trading, just focus on your trading. Don't also be on Skype with your friends. Don't also watch Netflix. Don't have your phone around. Don't scan through social media. Really put in the, the time and really put in focused work. That's really important. Don't trade off your phone. I know this is very popular these days, but especially in the beginning, your phone just doesn't have the real estate that you need to do a proper chart analysis and you will easily miss things and um, small scales and small screens will distort the price action and uh, it will just give you a, a wrong or a bad view of the market. And understand that trading is a job. It is in the end, even though trading does not require any any other qualifications. Everybody can download MetaTrader, put it on their phone and just start trading. But trading is a job. In the end, it's a job. It's a very difficult job. Uh, very few people become profitable traders in the end. However, I often question if it's really the problem that trading is too hard or maybe that just 95% of the traders that don't make it, they just don't give it the seriousness it deserves. They just see it as a hobby, as a, as a quick way to, to get rich. So understand that you need to take this seriously. Avoid shortcuts that is true in trading, but in, in all areas of your life, when something is too good to be true, it usually is. It's just uh, cliches are there for a reason. Um, and this is certainly true in trading. So whenever you see that somebody is trying to sell you anything that is just sounding so amazing that um, that it doesn't make too much sense and it's just too good, then stay away from it. It usually doesn't work or it actually never does work. Also, when it comes to shortcuts, you need to understand that you need to apply moderate risk management. Uh, I will come back to this later in a bit, but um, this is also true for shortcuts. Many traders try to try to get to, to a place where they have big accounts uh, quicker by just using reckless risk management, um, large positions and all of those things. Those are really, really bad and will not get you, you where you need to go. And it, it's also bad for another reason because it, it will ingrain or it will, you will adopt um, bad behavior in trading. And then once you have done it, especially if you have done it for months and months on demo, um, it's very hard to unlearn those negative and bad behaviors. Be process oriented, especially in the beginning. It's really important that you focus on the process. In the beginning, your results won't be great. You won't make a lot of money if you make any money. And therefore, it's very easy to, dis to get discouraged, but instead focus on the process, look at your trades and ask yourself, did you execute your trade correctly? And did you follow your rules? Did you follow your plan? And if this is the case, then this is what you should be proud of. And regardless of the outcome, the outcome and making money and all of those things, that's something to worry about later on. But in the beginning, just make sure that you understand how to follow the, follow the process. 
give yourself at least five years. This is how long it may take. For many people, it may take longer. But one thing is certain is that you won't become a profitable trader in six months and live your dream while having Ferraris and Lambos and all of those things. So really play the long game in all areas of your trading. And playing the long game is actually quite a, it's a, it's a very, it's a very different mindset approach as well, because you will approach things very differently when you give yourself one week, one month, one year or 10 years. If you have, or if you give yourself um, just a, a short period of time and you really want to make it and you think that in six months you will completely change your life, then obviously, first of all, when you don't reach those goals, um, then you will be very frustrated. Or another thing is that while you're, while you're doing it, you will approach trading differently, obviously. You will, you will just go and look for those shortcuts. You will try to, to get to the goal uh, in a quicker way. And this obviously, again, leads to just taking bad trades, making bad decisions, and this needs to be avoided. Whereas when you play the long game, you're not too worried about immediate results. You're not worried about short-term problems or short-term issues and you can approach trading on a much more relaxed um, on a much more relaxed level and just give it the time it, 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 it needs. Review and analyze regularly. I've said it again and again and again, a trader who does not journal has zero chances of ever becoming profitable. Just ask yourself right now, do you remember your last five to 10 trades? Do you remember your last three trades? What you did exactly? what you did with your rules and how it all played out, how did your trade management affect your rules and all of those things. And if you can't even remember your last five trades, how do you expect to become better over the months and over the years? You will not learn any lessons. You will not be able to avoid mistakes. You will just keep repeating the same mistakes over and over again if you don't have a good review um, and feedback loop. So every month, every week, go through your trades that you did and make sure you have already put them in your journal before. What I recommend is enter the trades into your journal as soon as you, as you enter the trade, actually. Um, this is, is good because then the memories are still fresh in your mind. You still know why you did what you did. And then you come back to the trades a week later, maybe two weeks later, and you look and you can look at them with some distance and then you often see and you can see and you wonder what did you do back then why did why did you take that trade why did you make that decision because in the moment we can always rationalize all bad behavior and especially if there's money on the line and we are in the trade um, our our view and our perception is very distorted we can come up with the weirdest reasons why we need to break our rules Whereas when you come back to your trades uh, a little bit later, you can look at them more objectively and this will help you find, uh, find errors, find mistakes that you keep repeating. Then you can find out what works and what doesn't. So if you don't have a trading journal, this should be one of your main priorities. Get a trading journal. Hopefully you will get edge wrong because that's what we did and uh, what we created actually. And um, yeah, those are all the features that I wanted to have and Moritz wanted to have in, in, the, in a trading journal and make sure to check out Edronk. Don't risk more than 3%, and 3% is already kind of a high high level um, on the risk side. Many traders go for smaller gains or smaller um, percentages uh, for risk management. If you see that you, trade, or that you risk five or even more percentage uh, per trade, this is probably going to lead to many emotional issues because Losing streaks will happen and it is not uncommon to have three, four, five, six losses in a row. It will happen. It's just simple math. Um, and just imagine how, how much your account will lose if, if you encounter a five trade losing streak and you're risking 5%. Suddenly your account is down 25% and obviously this will get to you emotionally and you will start uh, probably making trading decisions that are not in your trading plan and that are more driven by emotions. So you need to avoid that. Losing streaks will happen. Plan accordingly. Very, very important. No system hopping. This is one of the, the, the worst things that a trader can do and that many traders will do. They take a system from wherever 
they trade it, they are very excited, and then once they have the first two or three losses in a row, they will doubt the system, they will move on, and they will look for something else because they think, mm, this is not what I've been looking for. And it is not often talked about that a system is not something that you just pick up and then it works from the start. A system is something that needs to be developed over time. A system, a trading system, needs adjustments and tweaking all the time. It needs to it needs to be adapted to the market conditions and it needs to be adapted to your trader personality as well. So what I often recommend is that, or what I often say is that you can pretty much take any system and turn it into a profitable one. This is the mindset of a professional and a profitable trader. This is the growth mindset that you need to have when you are when you want to become a profitable trader. So instead of trying to find a holy grail system, focus on making one system work. This is uh, really important. A system is a is a very delicate thing and a system, a trading system is more than just entries. And once you realize and once you really internalize that a trading system is more than just entries, you will look at a trading system differently and you will see all those little things that you can tweak. You can maybe tweak the entry, your rules a little bit. You can tweak the, the stop loss placement, the targets, your trade management, all of those things. And over time, you will constantly make little adjustments, little adjustments that will improve your system a little bit here, a little bit there. And then over time, you can turn any trading system into a profitable one. This is the real approach that pro uh, profitable and professional traders choose. Whereas amateurs, they just hop from system to system because again, they don't want to put in the work. They just hope to f stumble over something that just works, but it doesn't work that way. Have a checklist. If you've been following me for a while, um, you've probably heard me say that many, many times. And I have picked up this idea from Marty Schwartz's book. He's uh, one of those market wizards. And his book, Pitbull Champion Trader, I really recommend it all the time. And in there, he said that he uses every day a physical checklist. He wrote down his trading rules on a piece of paper, laminated it, and then whenever he takes a trade, he goes through the checklist, checks it off, and sees if he really is looking at a valid trade or if there are things missing. And it helps you be more objective. It eliminates a lot of subjectivity. And it also forces you to really get to know your trading system. And it really forces you to look at all the components that you look at or that you use in your trading strategy. And over time, you will you will start looking at individual points in your trading strategy. You will ask yourself, is this really the right approach of this little of this single point on my checklist, or is there is there a different? Is, is there another way of doing things? And you hopefully go back to your journal that you have by now, and you will look at okay, what would have happened if I changed this thing in my trading? Would have been would have been an improvement or not? So checklists together with a trading journal and a feedback process are just are just must-haves for a trader. Plan all trades in advance. Plan your trade and trade your plan. We all know this quote, but well, it's um, the thing with the, those popular quotes is that we all take them for granted, but we never really apply the knowledge. And in my trading, what I do is, and what you should be doing, what Moritz is doing, what we do in our master class is that we go through our all of our forex pairs and markets and commodities and whatever we trade on a daily basis or at least every two days depending on the time frame and we look at what is tradable what is not tradable what are potential setups what has to happen before we are getting into a trade and then you can create trading plans and trading plans help you to avoid making impulsive errors it or it helps with eliminating many, many issues that are related to trading psychology. Revenge trading can often be eliminated when you have trading plans because um, you need to have the trading plan obviously in advance. And if you see that, okay, maybe you, you have a trade, you exited for a loss, and then suddenly your emotions want to take over, you are almost getting into the revenge trading mode. But you see that this trade is actually not in your trading plan and it also doesn't fit your your checklist at all. And then hopefully in the beginning, obviously, you will ignore it and um, you will give in to your impulses and your emotions. But over time, you will learn that you need to listen to your trading plan. 
hopefully, and use the checklist as well. So over time, once the lessons sink in, um, trading plans together with the checklist is just going to significantly improve the way you look at charts and approach your trades. Full responsibility. This is something that, especially if you come from the nine to five world, I think it's uh, it's not easy because we, ever since we've been brought up, we try to avoid taking full responsibility and not even that, I think, because we are never, we never have to take full responsibility because we are just following orders from other people, whether you are in school, you just listen to your teacher, when you're in university, you just follow the professor and um, do what he says you need to study. When you have a regular job, you just listen to your boss, what he tells you to do. And the, how you call it, just the, there's no real place for full responsibility because you are never making your own, or very rarely you're making your own decisions. And in trading, it's very different because in the end, you are trading alone. You are sitting by yourself in front of your screen all day long and there's nobody else to blame, it seems like. However, if you haven't been conditioned to take full responsibility, you will find something else to blame. You will blame the news, you will blame your broker, you will blame other people on social media, you will blame your wife because she distracted you, you will blame your dog because it ate your trading plan or whatever. We will always find something to, to blame if we really look hard and if we really try to. However, the problem with that is that if you don't take full responsibility for everything that happens in your trading, then also there's no way for you to get better, obviously, because those things are out of your control and you can't really do anything about it. However, on the other side, if you take full responsibility, and if you acknowledge that everything that you realize in your trading, every loss, every win, whatever happens in your trading, when you really understand and accept that this is all your fault, the good thing is that it is also only up to you to, to make it work and you are the only one who can actually improve it, which is actually empowering because you are the one that can change things for the better. And it's all in your hands, which is actually quite empowering. At first, it may seem it may seem not nice because, well, if you're fully reliant on yourself and if you just have a string of losses and nothing seems to work, obviously it's not nice to accept full responsibility because it may seem like you're a failure. But on the other hand, look at it in a way that you are the one who can change it and only you can change it actually, which is very, very empowering. So full responsibility is very important. Keep it fun, protect your mental capital, really important. I have mentored hundreds, probably thousands of traders over the years. And those who give up are not the ones who lose their trading account, but most of them lose or give up when they lose their mental capital, when trading isn't fun anymore, when they get too frustrated, when they keep making the same mistake over and over and over again, they have margin call after margin call. They may not even lose a lot of money, but they lose all the time. They they system hop, they don't study, and they just don't seem to get anywhere because they tr always go for the shortcuts, they always hunt for the, sister, the holy grail, and they always, yeah, just, they just go against what I've been talking about this whole video. And then at one point you will just get burned out. You will burn your emotional capital and then trading isn't fun anymore. It's, and I've seen many traders get to that point where they're very cynical, where they're very negative, where they have very negative self-talk. And then you often can see that shortly after they just drop out because they just can't take it anymore. So make sure that you have fun in your trading. Watch your language. That is very important. Maybe join a group of like-minded traders where you can exchange ideas that can help as well or have an accountability partner. It doesn't have, even have to be a trader, but just somebody that you can rely on, that you can be honest and open with and that you can just talk about. And I've seen that works uh, really well for many traders. You can even use your spouse um, or your girl girlfriend or whoever where you just talk honestly about your trading 
um, journey about what you're doing currently, what isn't going well, and just talking out loud about and reflecting on things uh, will help you process them in a very, very different way. Whereas we, when we always keep them in our heads, it's not, it's not the same. We, we are always stuck in those, uh, in those thought loops. And we just, if we don't get them out, then, and if we talk about them, they, they look, they sound very differently and we are able to think about different solutions. So make sure to have, to keep trading fun. And if you see that um, you are getting frustrated with trading, maybe take a break for a week or a month or whatever, and then come back to it, reflect on what it is really that you want and make sure that you really adhere to all those tips that I, I mentioned in the video. That will help you avoid many of those issues and hopefully help you protecting your mental capital.